small and compact. <laughs> so we're looking at a compound bow right here. So then once you get to like uh, a certain point, it's, it's like I'm only holding 15 pounds here, but it takes 70 to 75 pounds to pull it back. So go ahead and go through the draw procedure again. Let it off and okay. then draw it back. So it's hard right here. Very then, difficult. And then, boom, and you hit that, you hit that point, and it just is, it's only like holding 15 pounds. I could hold it forever. Yeah. So now he's up in the tree stand waiting for the deer, and now he can easily sit there and just maintain 15 pounds of draw. It doesn't fatigue him like the 50-pound draw did. He can sit there and wait and wait a much longer time without getting shaky, without getting tired. Yet, it's not like he's holding a wimpy bow. He's invested at least as much energy in that bow as what he did in the last one, probably more. A lot more. So this is actually a much more powerful weapon that's easier to hold in the armed position. So you can see why it's an advantage to hunters. Does that make sense? So why would you care about the force draw curve on this bow? Why, how could we apply calculus to that? Everything under the curve is? Not the force, but? the work you've done, the amount of energy you put into it. So you're looking basically for the fattest work curve, the amount, how much energy can we pack into that for the lowest amount of holding force it takes, so that way you're not sitting up in the tree. I mean, you could design a, a compound bow that had a 50-pound holding force. You might not be able to draw it then, but yeah. it, technically you, you could do it. Um, I mean, for example, the English uh, archers during the medieval times, their longbows, some of them had draw forces of 180 pounds. They actually dug up skeletons of English archers. They found their skeletons were deformed by the amount of practice they put into drawing these enormous bows back. There are tremendous weapons on the battlefield. There's some spectacular stories about you know, the kills that were made with English longbows from huge distances, too. Yeah, um, but the thing is, you know, most archers don't want to work and work and work out and develop 180-pound draw strength. They'd rather you know, do something much more efficient like this, not deform their bodies, uh, but yet get a lot of work, a lot of energy packed into that arrow uh, with a minimum holding force. Any other comments on the, that bow? Oh, yeah, um, the, the aim, too. It's, it's yeah. very um, straightforward. You know, you take this little peep right here, and as you pull it back, you look through the peep, and then you got, you got a set of, a, you got a set of a fiber optic pins right here. You know, and it's based on yardages, so the top one would be 20, then 30, 40, 50, 60. As of a longbow, it's all instinct. You just got you to gotta pull it back real quick and just let it right. go and just let it fly. You know, it's a lot easier with a compound bow, definitely. A lot of advantages. Yeah. With the con and you're saying the trigger. Tell people about the trigger, too. Oh, yeah. And you also, you also have a trigger as well that goes on this little string loop right here. And yeah, right there. Yep. And you put your... Um, you put your trigger, you, it's just like a little hook. You hook it right on here, and you pull it back, and then you got to trigger that, and then you just, you just you know, pull the trigger, and it just releases it. So you don't, have to, you don't even got to hold it with your fingers at all, so it doesn't, you know, it's just like, it's almost just like a gun. Yeah, yeah. yeah basically, once you've got a, a, a cross, or sorry, not crossbow, but a, a compound bow dialed in, it's a lot like shooting a gun. Line up the sights, pull the trigger. Yeah, pretty much. But with a, uh, a standard recurve or longbow, it's much more a matter of instinct. It takes many, many hours of practice oh, yeah. and lots of shots to develop that, that instinct. Definitely. And the, uh, the sights, uh, hold the sights up to the light again. I want to show oh, for yeah. the camera. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they, they light up pretty good. Yep, those little pins right there are passively lit by the light that they capture. And so you, like having lit up sights, uh, even in fairly low light conditions. And they even make them where the, um, the fiber, they have the fiber optics in a coil so that they even, you know, like they, they'll put a coil right here uh -huh. and it's so that it receives a, and they'll be brighter with a little, you know, less light. What about some of the other accessories here, like this funny looking thing at the end? Oh, this, this um, is just like a, it's rubber. It's just, it's got a little bit of weight so that you want to, you kind of want to, you want your bow to fall forward and follow through with your arrow. Okay. And it also uh, helps out with vibration in the bow. Then you got dampeners, these little dampeners that help out with vibration. And Why do you care about vibration? Um, just, it's just smoother when you shoot it in your hands, not like there's no kick, there's yep. no recoil or anything. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and then this is uh, your rest. As you can see here, I'll pull it back. Okay. The drop away rest. As I pull, as I pull it back, you'll see, you'll see that pop up. Ah, okay. And then, so as I release, that's, that drops rest. down to, so there's no, there's no friction, so your, your arrow's like in the air, you know, just free cool. floating, so you don't have any friction, so it doesn't like, you know, it doesn't 
um, have any drag or anything. That cool. Makes, that makes it more accurate. Yep. So. Calculus and hunting. Who would have?